Assalamu alaikum I am Iman Bajwa with your favorite YouTube channel Learning Simplified Today I have brought fourth video of our series History of Modern Warfare in which we are going to discuss the German Unification Wars also known as Bismarck's Wars If you like our video you can also watch previous videos of this series by clicking on the link given in the description below In this video we are going to learn what the German Unification Wars are and why these wars were fought then we will discuss the two important wars of this linkage and we'll try to analyze these wars in the end before the start of napoleonic wars during which france fought various wars against many european nations during 1790 to 1850 which were also mentioned in our first video of this series with the title of the congress of vienna Germany consisted of more than 300 states according to current international boundaries these states were spread around Germany Poland Czech Republic Belarus and Ukrainian territories all of these were separate and independent states the only thing coming among these states was the german race and the german language during the napoleonic wars as a result of gaining control over these german states Napoleon crafted 39 bigger states out of these 300 states and also formed Confederation of Rhine consisting of 16 the consisting of 16 of these states as we had mentioned our first video the congress of vienna germany was finally able to defeat napoleon in 1815 after defeating napoleon the germany The German states established the German Confederation after abolished the Confederation of Rhine. On one hand, the purpose of abolishing the Confederation of Rhine was to shed the catastrophic memories of French occupation, while on the other hand, it was aimed at unifying all the German states in order to collectively fight any foreign intrusions in future. The leadership of this German Confederation was with Austria which beside Prussia, Saxony and Bavaria was a great power among these German states. Although this unification proved successful in bringing all the German states together in effect it was a weak alliance because being two greater states Austria and Prussia were eyeing to lead all the german states while on the other hand the smaller german states feared aggression from these two greater powers germany and particularly prussia's history took an important turn when the prussian king william 1 appointed a former military officer otto von bismarck as prussia's chancellor in 1860s bismarck possessed extraordinary talents he had a great sense of prussia's capabilities and of the german nationalism he affirmed to unite all german states under prussian leadership and started his campaign from denmark denmark was a kingdom then having two duchies in the south duchy is a smaller sovereign territory inside a kingdom the ruler of which is called duke or duchies in case of a bohemian these two duchies were schleswig and holstein An earlier war between the Kingdom of Denmark and the German Confederation had already been fought from 1848 to 1852 over the control of these duchies. As a result of that war, according to the London Protocol Treaty, these two duchies were mutually accepted by sovereign territories by the Kingdom of Denmark and the German Confederation. However, the new Danish king Christian IX reclaimed these duchies in 1863 and tried to occupy them. As a result of this Danish endeavor, Prussia and Austria launched a combined offensive against Denmark on 1st February 1864, and the war ended on 30th October 1864 through the Treaty of Vienna. In the light of this treaty the kingdom of Denmark surrendered not only only Schleswig and Holstein but also Lauenburg to Prussia and Austria Although the treaty of Vienna gave the control of these two duchies to Prussia and Austria but the division of these two duchies 
between these Prussia and Austria remained a task at hand. In order to resolve this issue, a treaty was signed between these two powers on 14th August 1865 with the name of Gastein Convention, which gave control of Schleswig to Prussia and that of Holstein to Austria. The German history took another turn after signing of this treaty and the power struggle between Austria and Prussia for the rule of Germany took place. It also resulted into dilution of relations between these two powers. One reason of these strained relations was the route to the Duchy of Holstein which went under the control of Austria passed through Prussian territories. Taking advantage of the situation, Prussia started creating hurdles in Austrian line of communication. Moreover, since Prussia had also grown as a competitive power against Austria, it tried to convince Austria to divide the German states into two parts and hand over control of the northern German states to Prussia while retaining the south German states. But while underestimating the growing industrial and military powers of Prussia, Austria ruled out any power sharing formula and preferred war with Prussia. There were certain geographical disadvantages for Prussia in case of war with Austria. On one hand, most of the German states rallied to Austria instead of Prussia. On the other hand, Prussia's own territory was divided into two, that is Eastern and Western Prussia, with the state of Hanover interposed between the two parts. Moreover, Bohemia presented an ideal launching pad for the Austrian attack against the Prussian capital Berlin. But all these difficulties were in no case better off the Prussian general staff General Moltke, the elder, and Bismarck's strategic wisdom. Firstly, a swift Prussian maneuver disposed of Hanover and combined the Prussian state. After that, in order to remove the Austrian launch pad in the shape of Bohemia, Prussia took control of Saxony before arrival of the Austrian armies, thereby effectively utilizing North German railroad system and started concentrating its forces in Bohemia. Hence, by sheer use of intellect, capabilities and resources, Prussia turned its geographical disadvantages into advantages. Army of both the states clashed at Koningrads, where Prussia crushed Austria with its improved weapons technology, battle strategy and military leadership. After dealing with Koningrads, Prussian forces continued their advance towards Austria and almost reached the gates of Vienna. Fall of Austrian Habsburg monarchy was evident and the Prussian generals were preparing to celebrate an outstanding victory. But Bismarck had some other ideas. He was quite aware of the fact that only France and Russia would benefit from the war's continuation. While taking advantage of the war with Austria, if Russia and France invaded Prussia, it would not be able to defend it from three sides. So he convinced, his, convinced the Prussian king, William I, to immediately stop further advance and open negotiations with Austria try to convince Austria to give control of the North German states to Prussia along with the military and foreign affairs of the southern states. The almost defeated Austria openly accepted these terms because according to these terms, none of the Austria's own territory was being snatched. Hence, on 23rd August 1866, a treaty was signed between the two powers with the name of Peace of Prague according to which the German Confederation was abolished and the North German Confederation was established under the leadership of Prussia and Austria was restricted up to the north of the main river to its own territories, bringing all the German states under Prussian control. As a last step in German unification, all the remaining South German states also acceded to the North German Confederation in 1871, 
adopting the name of the German Empire, which came under the leadership of the Prussian king. And finally, as a constitutional amendment, the German Empire was replaced with the German Republic in 1918, which we know today as Germany. Although this move of stopping the war and opening negotiations by Bismarck is considered to be a masterstroke in history, the Prussian soldiers were apparently not very pleased with this move as they were robbed of a great military success on the battlefield. If we analyze Prussia's success in this war, it would not be exaggeration to say that the secret behind Prussia's success lay not in their tactical or technological advancement, rather strategic wisdom of Otto von Bismarck and professionalism by their military generals and the officers. Learning great lessons as a result of continuous defeats from France during the early 19th century, Prussia had established an effective war college which provided them extraordinary staff officers and commanders. In the shape of Bismarck, Prussia had a politician who could adopt aggressive or offensive strategy according to the needs of the hour. If we talk about technology, Prussia had established an effective railroad system during the 1850s which gave them extraordinary advantage during the war. Prussia had also taken leaps ahead of Austria in terms of weapons production and quality. Contrary to the Prussian advancements during the pre-war era, other major European powers did not possess such qualities or capabilities. The Europeans even considered Prussia a weak military force and were unaware of Prussian latest developments. Austria also became prey of this superiority complex. Britain, which was considered a superpower at that time, had cornered itself from the European continental affairs after the Crimean War. France also did not have focus on its strategy and it was also against Austria due to its behavior against Russia in the Crimean War. In the backdrop of this scenario, Prussia got free hand to pursue its strategic goals by effectively using its capabilities and resources without having to fear about the intervention of other European powers. That's all we had from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye till next video.